head to Dollar Tree to pick up these crates because I promise this is a DIY you're not going to want to miss. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to All Things Crafty where I love to do DIY on a budget, especially farmhouse decor. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would stick around and become part of our crafty family by clicking that red subscribe button and then the bell and all that way you're notified every single time I upload. My name's Melissa. I am pregnant mama of three and I have a huge goal of getting to 100k by the time my baby boy is born in October and I know that together we can do that. So do all the YouTube -y things. That is how I grow. That's how I get noticed a bit more. If you guys would share this out Subscribe, like I said, if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Do you guys think we can get this video to 3,000 likes? Let's do it together. So with all that being said, let's not waste any time. I am so excited to show you guys this project. I also wanna let you guys know it's gonna be a two-part video. I am gonna show you guys here in a minute. So with that being said, I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's get crafting. Let's take a trip down memory lane and look at my inspiration for today's DIY. Now this is the original little apothecary cabinet that I had made a few years back now. I can't believe it's been a few years. And ever since then, everybody has loved this DIY so much that I have made many different variations of it. So I really wanted to do a Halloween one. Now this did not start out as this shape. This was going to be something totally different. If you guys want to see my original idea, let me know down in the comments, but it ended up being what it is. So let's start off with the boxes. I get these crates from Dollar Tree and 10 in all. I do three on one side, three on the other side, and then two sets of two in the middle. So again, all together, you're going to have 10 crates and you're going to have two sets of three two sets of two, and then you're going to glue them together as you see here. I love the little um, chip clips from Dollar Tree um, to hold your stuff together while the wood glue is drying because I glued them together with some wood glue. And then once the glue was dry, I flipped it over and took all the stickers off of the bottom of the boxes. And then I stained the entire thing front and back with my Dixie Belle Black Magic Voodoo Stain. Now, the easiest way that I found to do this, because I'm not going to lie, you guys, this does take time, patience, and um, you got you get like a rhythm down uh, of the easiest way and the quickest way to cover these without like spray painting it, but I didn't want it to be a solid color. I loved that the wood grain shined through this Dixie Belle stain. So I just squirted some, <laughs> I just put some of the stain in the bottom of the tray, crate, whatever you want to call it. And then I painted the bottom and the sides. Once I had that completely covered, then I put some more on my brush or in the box itself and did the sides. So I just wanted to mention that that was the quickest and easiest way that I found. Once that was completely dry, I took this, um, removable wallpaper from Dollar Tree in the wood grain color and I just measure out the sides of the boxes or the top and the bottom, whatever you want to call it, and then I cut that down to size with my paper trimmer. Now, once again, to get the most out of this wallpaper, um, I cut it into strips and then I cut the pieces down to size. And all in all, you need 20 of the pieces to cover the top and the bottom. Once I had all my pieces cut, then I glue that down with some hot glue, leaving the backing on this removable wallpaper. That's going to ensure that you have a nice, sturdy, um, you know, base to put your little decor in. And it's also going to cover up those holes so that you don't see the, so that you don't see them as well. Next, I take a piece of poplar, um, I measure that out and then cut down those pieces to size for the front of our boxes. And when I get to the top, I just measure out each box. 
Okay friends, so the audio probably will not be very good, um, but I did not want to forget to mention this in this video. So I wanted to just make a little clip really fast talking about my soul. I literally get so many questions about this every single video. So I wanted to stop for a second and tell you guys, this is linked in my Amazon shop in the description box below. If you click the title of this video, a box will appear. You will see all of the links are now in one place. And then you will see a link. That is my link tree. Every single link that you need for me will be there. Uh, this is my DeWalt. Um, portable circular mini saw I forget what it's called <laughs> my husband bought it for me but it is a little mini saw um, you use it with one hand now some people might need to hold it and then you push this button down pull your trigger However, I am very used to using it one-handed so that I can hold my wood. My husband taught me how to use it with one hand. So, um, DeWalt came out with their one-handed tools um, a little bit ago, and this is a part of that line. We are a big fan of DeWalt in this house because it's really good quality, even though it is a little bit pricey. Um, I believe in paying a little bit more to get good quality stuff. So anyway, this is linked in my Amazon shop. Um, I'm sure you actually, I know you can get it at any local hardware store, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, um, really any hardware store should carry a line of DeWalt. So hope this helps. Next, I cut these down to size and then sand off any excess splinters from when I cut it. Next, I paint all of my front pieces with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now, I get a lot of questions about if I like Dixie Belle or Waverly better. Honestly, honestly, you guys, I don't have a personal preference. I actually truly love both of them. I have both of them in my stash. Um, it's just what I grab for at the time. I had a bunch of Dixie Belle or a bunch of Waverly left over from when I got a bunch of Dixie Belle and I didn't want to waste it, so I've just been using it up. So to answer your question, I love both. So once those were completely dry, then I go in with my mini chip brush and my ink Waverly chalk paint, and I dry brush the edges all the way around all four pieces. I also get a lot of questions on my mini chip brushes. Unfortunately, you guys and other creators sold them out um, about three years ago. I started using them on my channel. Everybody absolutely loved them, and now nobody can find them anywhere. So anyway, I did find a kind of comparable one. Uh, beware that the bristles do shed, but I did find some on Amazon that I did link in the description box below um, where these label holders are also linked as well because I glued down the front of these little boxes after I dry brushed and then I screwed down the label holders in front of each box. Once I was done with the label holders, then I took this little house from Dollar Tree. Now, if you guys have been around, then you know I just did a project similar to this using this house. So if you guys wanna see that, I can link that in the cards in the right-hand corner. But for this project, I separated the two pieces because I didn't, I don't know if you guys know, but they do come apart, making it much easier to paint. And I spray painted the bottom with my black spray paint and the top with my hammered silver spray paint. Once that was dry, I brought it back into the craft room. I took my natural sponge from Walmart and my elephant Waverly chalk paint, and I just dabbed the chalk paint all the way around the roof to dull down that silver. I then went in with that same natural sponge and my white Waverly chalk paint, and I dabbed that around the entire roof as well. And this is going to give it a galvanized effect. 
Now for this particular project, because it's a haunted house and because it's spooky, I did go in with that same natural sponge and dab just a little bit of black all the way around the roof and set that aside. I then went into the or went on the bottom with a small paintbrush and I just used some white Waverly chalk paint to brush some of those details on the house. Once I was finally satisfied, I set that aside to dry as well. I go back to the roof and I take my Antique Wax by Waverly and a very small um, paintbrush and I just kind of dab that in certain places and then use my finger to blend that in the roof. And then I realized that I could use the natural sponge to blend that color in to make it look like rust, much like foundation and a beauty blender if you will once i was satisfied with the rust and i you guys i'm so ocd it takes me forever because i really want this kind of stuff to look realistic so you do it till your eyes are happy just like i do the same so once i was finished the roof like i said I attached the roof and the bottom piece of the house uh, back together and then I took a string of lights from Amazon once again linked in my Amazon shop in the description box below and I put those into the back of the house gluing the battery pack to the bottom now if I did this again I would have glued the battery pack closer to the back so just be aware of that and then I made sure that the lights stayed in really nicely I traced out a piece of foam board, cut that out, and I also traced and cut out another piece of that removable wallpaper and attached that to the foam board. I then painted the edges black and dry brushed all the way around the edges just to give it a cool little effect, and then I glued that into the back of the house. Now I knew that I needed to access my lights, so all I did was right behind the door so you couldn't see it, I just cut a small little slit in the back of the foam board so that I could slide my finger in there to turn on the battery pack on and off. And look how cool this house is, all lit up. Oh my goodness, you guys. Um, and so for the next step, I took an Amazon box and I just cut two of the flaps off. Now I knew I wanted to make a roof for this project. I just wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna do it. So I started off with the cardboard and I kind of measured, I laid it, <laughs> let me back up you guys, cause this is a little bit confusing. So I laid the cardboard down onto the top of the box with the little block that I got from Dollar Tree behind it. And I just kind of eyeballed like a roof flaring out and I sketched that onto the cardboard. I then cut that out to see what I was working with. I ended up making the flare a little bit bigger. And I also ended up making the second one with the end of the flare longer so that it could fit all the way around the top of the block and then come down on an angle where the flare is, if that makes sense. So for the second one, obviously um, I did not make that one too long. So you learn the second go around. But for the first one, all I did was just cut another piece of cardboard and glue that to the back. So that way the, the top of the square is completely covered. Now for the sides, all I did was lay the block onto the piece of cardboard and I traced that out. And then I just kind of sketched where I thought that it would like lay down on top of, if that makes sense. I know this makes zero sense what I'm trying to explain, but you can see what I'm doing here. So I measured out the block and then I drew on an angle and cut that out. Once I had that perfect shape, then I was able to make three more for the sides of our roof. 
Once I was done cutting them out, then I glued all the pieces down and look how nicely this came together. I was just super impressed with myself, you guys, because I don't know if it's the ketones or what, but I've just ha been having such luck with my projects, like putting them together much better and just doing them an easier way. A lot of the times I do things the hard way and then I'm able to tell you guys the easy way. But anyway, long story short, <laughs> I love the way the roof came out. I paint came out. I painted that with my ink Waverly chalk paint and set that aside. Next, I pulled out my mini miter saw once again linked in my Amazon shop and I just cut a bunch of these little popsicle sticks up not being real, um, you know, particular on the sizing. I actually wanted these to be different sizes because as you know, um, like a haunted house's roof is really messed up. So do not get all technical like I did here. Um, I tried to like get the same sizes in a row. And then the second go around, I was like, Melissa, you are silly girlfriend. Like a haunted house is messy. It's not all... OCD uniform like you are and like you have this here. So anyway, long story short, you're going to see on the second one that I did learn. Once again, you learn the second time around. Um, but for the roof, I just kind of layered these pieces. So I started at the bottom with the ends of the popsicle sticks first, and then I quickly realized that the um, for the second one, I did all different pieces. There was no rhyme or reason. I just kind of placed them where I thought would look really good and I did it till my heart was content. And as you guys always know, I suggest that you do the same. Yours does not have to look the same as mine. If you want to try to recreate this project or any form of the project, um, definitely don't be afraid to make it your own. So for the second one, because I did that at nighttime, <laughs> I'm in my craft room a lot, but sometimes I like to bring stuff like this inside at night when the kids go to bed. I can just pop on a show and this did take about a half an hour a piece once I had all the pieces cut. So anyway, um, once I looked at the second one, then I added pieces to the first one to make it look a little bit more uniform because the first one looked way too, way too perfect to be a match to the second one. So anyway, <laughs> once I was done my roof, it looked so good. I was getting so excited, you guys. All I did was take my paintbrush and just brush away all of the glue strings and then I very carefully painted both of the roof pieces with my ink Waverly chalk paint. Next I went in with my metallic sterling silver folk art acrylic paint. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Then I went in with my mini chip brush and the paint and I just dry brushed all the way around that roof on the side and I absolutely love the way this silver looks. It just gives it that spooky and like haunted vibe if you will. I don't know would you guys have used white or do you like the effect that this silver gives? Next, I glue the roof pieces down on the left and right side with some hot glue. And then once I was done with the roof, I took the house and I also took the little wooden squares from Dollar Tree and I glued those to the bottom of the house, one on the right and the left side, two in the front and then two in the back, I believe actually one in the back. <laughs> and then I glued that down in between our boxes in the middle. And then I wanted to make little stairs, so all I did was take a small square dowel and I laid out two of those blocks from Dollar Tree, measured out how big the pieces need to be to go in front of that, and then cut out six pieces that size. Again, not really worrying if it is exact because spooky steps are all messed up once again. So once I had all of my pieces cut out, then I lay it down on a piece of wax paper. 
and I glue the pieces together. Now I glued the bottom pieces together nicely and then for the next two I kind of glued those on a slant. The second one I glued on a slant and I glued it so it was kind of like pushed up a little bit and then for the top one I glued that down to the top as well and I realized that it was a little bit too tall to go in front of the house so I just used my miter shears to cut off the top of that. I then stained that with my Dixie Belle Tobacco Reed Voodoo Stain and while that stain was still wet, I took some ink Warily chalk paint and just dry brushed some of that paint all around the steps, once again giving it that spooky vibe. I then glued the steps to the front of the house with some hot glue, and I knew that I wanted to make kind of like a graveyard, so I pulled out a bunch of different sizes of tongue depressors or craft sticks, popsicle sticks, whatever you like to call it. I call them popsicle sticks. So I cut those down again, different sizes, and then I measured on that same square dowel rod and I cut those pieces down for the bottom of the tombstones. To glue the tombstones to the square dowels, I took one of those small squares from Dollar Tree with my mutter, miter shears. I cut that into three and then I glued each little piece to the back of our popsicle sticks and then glued that down to the square dowel. That way you have a little bit more space to glue to. I then took them outside and spray painted them with my hammered silver Krylon Fusion spray paint. And once those were dry, then I used that same exact technique that we did for the house or for the rooftop, I should say, on the house um, using the natural sponge and the combination of the elephant and the white Waverly chalk paint to make these look like galvanized metal or stone. Um, I just thought, I just love this technique. I think it looks really cool for either or galvanized metal or stone. So once I was done that, then I went in with those chip brushes that I was telling you about and I dry brushed all the way around each tombstone and then I literally just decorated each one however I saw fit. I got these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree and just cut out a different random um, like images and then uh, transferred those on. And this is where you get to be creative. If you don't like the way that I did my tombstones, you could freehand a saying, I hate my handwriting, especially for home decor and projects. So that's why you don't see me do that much. But if you like your handwriting, go for it. If you want to print images off and um, put those on yours, go for it. It's totally up to you. So once I was done my tombstones, I went in with that same chip brush and my my um, stain once again to make them look rusty and then I glued those to the front of our house. Next I took some of this Spanish moss and I just put that all the way around the tombstones in front of the house that way you could not see the bottom of the crates. Now, I always get all the different types of mosses mixed up, so I know this is a different type of moss than the Spanish moss that I just used. Floral moss, floral moss, right? Yes, floral moss. Next, I took this floral moss and 
once again randomly just put some hot glue on my roof of the little house and I put some of this floral moss all around the roof to make it look like all of this stuff was grown over and once again it just gives that super spooky Halloween vibe and once I was done with the small house then I went to the little roof pieces on either side and I also did the same exact thing. After I was done with the second rooftop on the right hand side then I went in with my Spanish moss once again and I just kind of pushed that down onto the side of the house and the back of the house that way you couldn't see any of that if anybody happened to look in the back I could also kind of see that the sides were a little bit empty from the front as well so I wanted to make sure that it was really covered and you couldn't see any of the wood underneath the house so I just kind of tucked that into the bottom of the house and then the next thing I wanted to do <laughs> See this project you guys I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know that it started out as a completely different shape then the top and all the little pieces in my head were completely different and as I went along I just kept adding and adding different things so um, for this part I just cut a bunch of little teeny popsicle sticks I cut them in half and then I also cut the tops like a fence in different sizes and I laid them down I also measured the space that I had beforehand and drew a line on my wax paper or my parchment paper so I knew how long I needed each fence piece and then once I had all of the pieces cut then I cut a popsicle stick in half cut the ends off and then glued that piece down to the other little pieces to connect them all together if that makes sense once that was finished then i painted it with my ink waverly chalk paint and dry brushed it with that same silver acrylic paint i also took these bats from dollar tree and dry brushed that same silver paint like look how cool those are compared to how they originally looked i loved how it pulled all the details of the bat out and then i just glued those fence pieces to the e on either side of the steps with some hot glue making sure that the glue was dry before i like pulled my hand away because i didn't want it to fall and pull up the um, spanish moss it would have been a big mess so just make sure your glue is dry before you go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> so to finish this project off now I would love to make all of the decor pieces on the inside for you guys I just did not have time in this video so for Friday's video if you guys want to see that let me know down in the comments I can definitely bring that to you but to finish today's video and this project off for now I take this um, sign that I got at Easter time at Dollar Tree and took the transfer that I wanted to use measured that out and then cut that sign down with my knife and gave it a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint I also took two small stir sticks and painted those as well and then I figured out that I had this other transfer in my stash um, if you guys want this transfer I can leave the link I know this is definitely available in my shop but I took the welcome foolish mortals transfer after I had cut it out from the rest of the little haunted houses and the little decorations and sayings then I transferred on that saying going long ways instead of how the transfer is um, from top to bottom making sure to dry in between transferring on each word I also wanted to mention that I did use my white chalk paste to transfer this on and then I thought it was perfect that I could still use the original saying that I was going to use at the bottom it worked together perfectly so I thought welcome foolish mortals enter if you dare was the perfect saying and then that little space on the end I transferred on some 
of that little skull haunted house. To finish this, uh, all I did was take my mini chip brush and that same silver acrylic paint that we've been using, dry brushed all the way around this sign as well as in the middle, and then I also dry brushed some silver onto our stir sticks. I glued my sign down to the top. I wanted it on an angle, so I glued that down to the top and then glued that to the top of our haunted house. I glued a bat to the sign and literally you guys, that was it. I absolutely love this project. I put my all into it. Did it take a little bit of time? Absolutely. But I promise you guys, anything worth anything takes time. Um, it takes your energy and everything. So I am so in love with this project. This probably is my favorite project I've ever done so far. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Let me know what your favorite project that I've ever done is. Um, I'm curious to hear your opinion, but right now I just am gloating in the amazingness of this project. So let me know, you guys. I would love to hear your opinion. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sticking around. Let me know if you want to see me make decor pieces for the inside of this. Um, I would love to bring that to you. Like I said, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Share this out if you think somebody would enjoy this project. Um, I really appreciate it. It helps my channel to grow and helps YouTube to notice me a bit more. Everything you guys do, the thumbs up, um, the subscribe, the shares, the comments, all that stuff really, really helps. And I just want you guys to know that none of this is possible without you. I appreciate every single one of you more than you could ever know. If you guys want any chalk couture information or ketone information, or you guys just want to be a part of my text crew, that way you can get text when I go live or when I upload a video. It doesn't just have to be for the other stuff. Um, I do also send out a text letting you guys know when I upload as well. So text me at the number. I'll leave it at the end. It's also 302-204-0881 if you want to write it down. Um, I would also like to thank you guys for being here. I want to say I love you and that you are absolutely amazing. You're gorgeous. You're worthy. You literally can do anything you set your mind to. Do not forget it. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe on your way out. And I love you guys so much. Until next time, bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.